Hi everyone, this is Dr. Masood Yusuf. This video lecture will cover time-dependent perturbation theory in a very quick session. We have already covered time-independent perturbation theory in another video that can be found on the channel. This video lecture is mainly consists of three parts or three sections. First part is introductory part which will cover what is perturbation theory and why to include time dependence. The second part is supplementary and this section is important in order to understand the main part which is the theoretical framework of time dependent perturbation theory. At the end reference material will be furnished that can be helpful in order to understand further uh, understanding on this topic. Let's begin the introductory part. What is perturbation theory? Perturbation theory is developed to deal with small corrections to problems which we have solved exactly such as the harmonic oscillator and the hydrogen atom. Perturbation applied to a system is of two types, time dependent and time independent. Perturbation means small disturbance. Remember that the Hamiltonian of the system is nothing but the total energy of that system. Some external factors can always affect the energy of the system and its behavior. What is the importance or why to bother perturbation theory? It reveals to us universal principles which are very important and cannot be obtained from just numerical simulation. Perturbation theory is in many cases the only theoretical technique that we have to handle various complex system both quantum as well as classical. This video lecture is about time dependent perturbation theory so one must know that why we are including time dependence. Was time independent independent perturbation theory not enough. So in time independent perturbation quantum mechanics of systems are described by Hamiltonians that are time independent. Although suitable for closed systems, closed quantum systems, this formalism fails to describe interaction with an external environment such as electromagnetic fields. In such cases, more convenient to describe induced in interactions of small isolated systems through time-dependent interaction. The time-independent perturbation theory allows us to work out corrections to the energy eigenvalues and eigenstates. However, it is not capable of working out consequence of a perturbation that depends on time. Even when the perturbation is time independent, it is always useful to study the time dependence of the system. Way to apply time dependent perturbation theory. In nature, most quantum phenomena are governed by time-dependent Hamiltonians. So one need or one should apply time-dependent perturbation theory. Time-dependent perturbation theory is most useful for studying processes of adsorption and emission of radiations by atoms or more generally for treating the transition of quantum systems from one energy level to another. 
time dependent perturbation theory allows the system to evolve from initial eigen state until time t and then make a measurement of observable a of which final eigen state is b let's say b here is the second part of the video lecture which is about supplementary terms these are very important terms one should understand these terms in order to understand uh, the spirit of the time dependent perturbation theory one should know about time evolution of a function formally we can evolve a wave function forward in time by applying time evolution operator i will connect these terms when we will uh, study the uh, general framework or mathematical formalism of time dependent perturbation theory then you will notice that uh, we need uh, how uh, much we need these terms uh, in order to understand the uh, time dependent perturbation theory so for time evolution operator Uh, we can evolve a wave function forward in time exactly what is this operator a, it will depend on the particular system and the interactions that it undergoes second supplementary uh, uh, material or term is the interaction picture so this is taken from the zetli book so uh, at the end of the this lecture i will furnish the study material you will find the reference from there so what is the interaction picture this is uh, this will be included in time dependent perturbation theory so let's uh, just briefly uh, ha have a look on this the interaction picture is also called dirac picture and is useful to describe quantum phenomena with hamiltonians that depend explicitly on time in this picture both state vectors and operators evolve in time so this is very important both state vectors and operators they evolve in time we need therefore to find the equation of motion for the state vectors and for the operators so here is the uh, the state vectors in interaction pictures are uh, defined in terms of simply schrodinger state uh, let's say psi t in the cat form and in interaction picture it can be written like this so this is the uh, evolution operator h not is the hem hamiltonian of the unperturbed system and here is the uh this is the schrodinger equation 10.19 this is the schrodinger equation in the interaction picture it shows that the time evolution of the state vector is governed by the interaction v i t so this is the uh, so the uh, evolved system has the hamiltonian let's suppose h which is decomposed into the uh, h not plus v h not is the hamiltonian of the unperturbed system and v is the uh, hamiltonian of the uh, time dependent part of the hamiltonian so uh, don't don't be confused or it's not that difficult i will shortly connect this uh, these terms to the perturbation theory then they will be they will become more clear so where to apply interaction picture so before this uh, one should uh, know that and schrodinger representation in schrodinger representation the operators are time dependent except for explicitly time dependent potentials the cats representing the quantum states deve develop in time so in schrodinger Uh, re representation operators are time dependent and states they are 
time dependent uh, so one should and there is another representation which is called heisenberg representation in which cats uh, stay the same uh, the time dependence is in the operators so this is the difference between schrodinger and heisenberg representation these differing uh, representation describe the same uh, physics matrix elements of operators between cats must be the same in both the most uh, natural to use depends on the problem at hand so interaction picture uh, so what is this interaction picture then uh, how it is differ uh, how it differs from schrodinger and heisenberg representation so interaction picture is an intermediate representation between the schrodinger uh, picture and the heisenberg picture whereas in the other two pictures either the uh, state vector or the operators carry time dependence in the interaction picture both carry of the time dependence of observable so this is the main difference in interaction picture both state vectors and operators they are time dependent uh, in heisenberg picture wave function is considered stationary the interaction picture is useful in dealing with changes to the wave functions and observables uh, due to interactions let's proceed to the a uh, third part of the lecture which is the theoretical framework of the time dependent perturbation theory so in order to uh, go through the mathematical portion we will assume uh, uh, we have some assumptions what are those all eigen states of unperturbed hamiltonian h not are known as well as their corresponding eigen energies so this we have already gone through these assumptions in time independent perturbation theory also so uh, all eigen states of uh, unperturbed uh, hamiltonian h not uh, they are known so this is uh, our assumption n not uh, forms a complete basis what is basis i have already covered in time independent perturbation theory in which any eigen function of the full hamiltonian can be expanded perturbation uh, in this lecture it will be v but it can be h1 also it can be represented by any letter so it's known this means that we can write down h1 using the complete basis of n not so quantum states with discrete eigen energies are considered only so we are using uh, same set of assumptions as we have uh, used in time uh, independent perturbation theory what is the main objective of this video lecture so what we are going to achieve if a system is in an eigen state of hamiltonian that it will remain in that state for all the time this is what we already know but by applying perturbations however we can induce transitions between different eigen states of the unperturbed hamiltonian this is also true by probing the rate at which such transition occur and the energies absorbed or emitted by the system in the in this process we can infer information about the states involved and so far what is our final objective the calculation of the state vector up to the desired order in the perturbation and transition rates that will be covered in another video will be addressed so in this video lecture we will calculate state vectors up to the desired order in the perturbation 
also transition rates but that will be covered in another video lecture so let's start the uh, theoretical or mathematical formulation of the time dependent perturbation theory so here is the equation one we consider here uh, only those phenomena that are described by Hamiltonian which can be split into two parts a time independent part H naught and a time dependent part V that is small compared to H naught so this is the uh, we have considered the phenomena in which uh, we have split the Hamiltonian into two parts one is the unperturbed uh, time independent part so there is no time dependence involved in it and the another part uh, is uh, small as compared to H naught but it is time dependent so uh, there is a phenomena uh, it can be some emission or absorption or uh, there is some uh, some effect of electric uh, electromagnetic field so the Hamiltonian associated with that phenomena can be split into two parts one is independent part and the another is dependent part so this is uh, the Schrodinger equation <coughs> consider a system which when uh, unperturbed is described by a time independent Hamiltonian H naught whose solution the eigenstates E n and eigen uh, states uh, psi n are known. So this is also our assumption that E n and uh, psi n eigen states they are known. So this is equation two. So let's discuss equation uh, three and whose most general state vector are given by stationary states so this is the uh, general state vector uh, which can be given by stationary states and this is the time evolution uh, operator uh, which is involved so so th this uh, yields the eigen states e n so this is the psi n uh, of t is the most general state vector uh, that is considered uh, what is uh, vt as you know this is the time dependent part of the Hamiltonian shown in equation 1 so uh, in the interval from 0 to le let's say tau uh, in the its value is vt and from t less than 0 or t greater than tau there is no value that is it is 0 so vt uh, time dependent part of the Hamiltonian is affecting the system only in this interval so not uh, before or not uh, and not beyond uh, tau so this is the uh, vt during the time interval from 0 to uh, 0 to uh, tau the Hamiltonian of the system is h equal to this is the h is equal to h naught plus vt and the corresponding Schrodinger equation is given by equation 5 so during the this uh, time interval uh, from 0 to tau we have this Hamiltonian given in equation 1 and corresponding Schrodinger equation is given by uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation is given by equation 5 <coughs> let's proceed further so let's uh, see what is this equation 6 uh, before that uh, uh, 
how does vt affect the system when the system interacts with vt it is either absorb or emit energy this process inevitably causes the system to undergo transition from one unperturbed eigen state to another the main task of time dependent perturbation theory consists of answering this question the standard method uh, to solve equation 5 uh, the standard method to solve this time dependent schrodinger equation 5 uh, uh, is to is to expand psi t in terms of an expansion coefficient cn is to so this is the standard method that we adopt in order to solve uh, equation 5 shown in previous slide so we consider the psi n in terms of an expansion coefficient uh, c n so uh, and the insert uh, this uh, and then we insert uh, this psi n psi t uh, which is shown in equation 6 into equation uh, 5 to find c n t to various order in the approximation instead of following this procedure and since we are dealing with time dependent potentials it is more convenient to solve equation 5 in the interaction picture so this is the uh, interaction picture representation of the perturbed state function so we have already discussed uh, what is the interaction picture what is schrodinger or heisenberg and heisenberg picture so this is the equation uh, 7 so we are uh, opting uh, this uh, procedure now so where uh, psi t this uh, i in subscript represents interaction is equal to this so and this psi t is the schrodinger picture representation of the perturbed state function in which we have demonstrated uh, uh, that uh, the state function they are time dependent and the uh, operators they are not in interaction picture both state and uh, operators they are time dependent and vt is uh, given by uh, this so interaction uh, in interaction picture the state function and operator they are given by this the time evolution equation uh, is given by where u is the time evolutionary operator uh, may be written in the interaction picture as uh, this so we uh, have this so we put the value of psi t from uh, you you can see uh, from here so we have put the value of psi t and then further uh, we have uh, again uh, we have applied uh, this the, the value of this can be psi t i can be again written in interaction picture as like this so this is the interaction picture if we shift this exponential form to uh, the other side so we have a negative here so you you can see we have uh, used this yellow highlighted uh, portion again so this is the uh, our equation 8 So this is the uh, interaction uh, interaction picture. Uh, uh, the state function is written in terms of interaction picture, uh, where the time evolution operator is given in interaction picture by this relation. So we can insert equation uh, nine into seven. So the, here this is the nine and we can go back to the slide 7 and we can check
just put, simply put the psi t i value uh, in equation 7. So what we have? We have uh, this equation 11. So the solution of this equation with an initial condition uh, ui ti uh, uh, ti equal to i are given by the integral equation. So the solution of this equation uh, uh, can be given uh, with the help of the integral equation. So this is the solution. So ui is the solution of equation 11 which is given in equation 12. Time dependent perturbation theory provides approximate solution to the to this integral equation. Uh, this consists in assuming that V i t is small and then proceeding iteratively. So we have already assumed that when we split the h into h naught plus v v, then we have already assumed that v is small. The first order approximation is obtained by inserting uh, ui uh, equal to 1. So for, for first order approximation, so we, we can simply put ui in equation 12 as 1. So equation as 1 leading to uh, ui 1. So what we have left behind from equation 12 so this is for second order uh, uh, correction so substituting uh, ui uh, is equal to this so for first order we will put it equal to 1 and then further we will move iteratively so we will put this uh, in the integral sign uh, in equation 12 in equation 12 we get the second order approximation as this and for uh, third order approximation we will put this again in equation 12 and we will get the equation uh, this uh, equation for the third order approximation so uh, and and uh, this goes on uh, so this uh, series we will obtain a kind of series so this series is known as the Dyson series and what was our objective it allows for the calculation of state vectors up to the desired order in the perturbation this was our uh, target for this video and next time we will calculate the transition rates so you guys uh, can go to uh, the reference material you you can check that Lee book uh, for further concepts and deep understanding the topic is uh, taken from the that Lee book so i hope you will uh, try to understand the topic uh, very well and further uh, to further develop your uh, understanding thank you uh, that's all uh, for now bye